Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. My, uh, my name is Noor Amira Jalam Dawahid, 264-338. We are from Group A, International Trade and Finance. We are going to present on the topic 4.1, Documentary Credit. Uh, we have we have four in a group, which is for the first one is Ani Soleha Binti Muhammad Nin, Nurul Hanan Binti Hairuddin, Noor Amira Jalam Binti Wahid, Nurul Izzah Adina Binti Noor Hisam. For the first one is, I'm going to explain about obligations and responsibilities of parties. Okay, for applicant, uh, also known as the account party or credit opener, if the sales contract which he has concluded with his trading partner that provides for payment by way of document credit, the buyer is obliged to request his bank to issue a credit on his account. For issuing bank, uh, by issuing the credits, the issuing bank undertakes to make payment to the beneficiary, which exporter. The bank makes payment only after the exporter presenting the stipulated documents and on complying with the terms and conditions of the credit. Okay, next for advising bank. Uh, issuing bank will request the advising bank to advise the credit to seller. Uh, it is an accepted banking uh, practice for an issuing bank to advise the credit to the seller uh, through the intermediary of an advising bank. The next one is uh, confirming bank. Confirming bank uh, relieves the seller of the risk associated with the failure or non-payment by the issuing bank. And it also uh, relieves the seller against country risk and exchange control restriction on transfer of money that may uh, be placed on the issuing bank. Okay, next for beneficiary, this is the seller or the exporter in whose favor a documentary credit is issued. He is the person named in the documentary credit to receive payment after he has presented the stipulated documents and complied with all the terms and conditions of the credit. For the nominated bank, this is the banks uh, usually in the seller's country nominated by the issuing bank to pay to accept or to negotiate drafts thrown by the beneficiary against presentation of stipulated document. Okay, uh, for the next one is paying bank. Paying bank is nominated by the issuing bank also, specifically to make the payment to the beneficiary against stipulated documents, which may or may not include a draft or uh, like uh, bills of exchange. For accepting bank, the bank are nominated by the issuing bank, specifically to accept draft drawn by the beneficiary provided the document standard are uh, in conformity with the credit. By accepting the draft, the accepting bank becomes primarily responsible for payment of the draft on its nature, maturity. For negotiating bank, uh, the bank that negotiates a draft uh, like bill of exchange presented to it under a credit and pays uh, the beneficiary. Uh, it also acts like a uh, remitting bank uh, as this is the bank that remits the documents from the seller which is exporter to the issuing bank in the buyer which is importer's country. An issuing bank may nominate another bank in the seller's country to negotiate documents drawn uh, under the credit. This would mean uh, that the credit is restricted for negotiation with that nominated bank only. For reimbursing bank, uh, the bank nominated by the issuing bank also, from which uh, a negotiating bank may claim reimbursement for payment made under a documentary credit. Uh, reimbursing bank may be in a different country from that uh, the issuing bank and the negotiating bank, especially when the currency for the credit is neither that of uh, the issuing bank nor that of the negotiating bank. For the next part is trust transferring bank. Transferring bank is uh, roles act, act roles like 
the paying, accepting or negotiating bank that makes the credit available in whole or in part to one or more second beneficiaries at the request of the first beneficiary is known as the transferring bank. Correspondent bank, uh, the term correspondent bank or correspondent used in international trade refers to another bank in another country with which the first bank maintains a banking service agreement. Assalamualaikum and a good day to the lecturer and my fellow friends. My name is Nurohana Binti Harudin, metric number 264211. Okay, today I will present about uh, about the presentation of document in documentary credit. Firstly, let's get to know what is presentation of the document. Presentation of documents is a documentary credit. It's a bank undertaking to pay its beneficiary based on the presentation of required document where it's provided that the presentation complies with the term and condition uh, of the credits. The availability of uh, the letter of credits or document documentary credit determines to whom a presentation may be made and the acts that the, may, the bank may be performed. There are a few types of presentation document, presentation of document, uh, which are includes of asset payments, acceptance, deferred payments, and negotiation. Next, in this slide, we will see about the side payments and acceptance. Okay, for the first one is uh, which is side payment, where the side payment is a nominated, nominated bank that determines that it's a presentation made to its comply where this nominate uh, with this nominated bank must forward the involved document to the issuing bank. Also, in the site payment, where uh, must pay the beneficiary at site for a complying presentation unless its nominated bank is a, a confirming, confirming bank or a issuing, issuing bank that does not have obligation to pay the beneficiary at site payments. Okay, for the second one is acceptance where uh, it is a credit available in nominated bank by acceptance uh, by nominated bank that may honor with the accepting the draft drawn on for a complying for complying presentation. If uh, have acceptance draft, the drawee may purchase its own draft or its own acceptance draft. So if the nominated bank uh, is the confirm confirming bank or or also known as F issuing issuing bank, a complying presentation uh, may its obligation bank to honor. The third one is a uh, deferred payments where it is a uh, credit available with a nominated bank by deferred payment. The nominated bank may be prepaid uh, its deferred payment under undertaking. Also, the normal rate bank uh, must be seen at the stated document in the issuing bank. Also, nominated bank may repay its deferred payment undertaking and has obligation to pay at maturity. However, if the nominated bank uh, deferred payment is incurred in a uh, complying presentation, which means that the confirm, confirming bank or the issue, issuing bank must be pay, must pay at the maturity. Okay, last but not least, the negotiation where it is a purchase draft and document under a complying presentation. It is, it is also advancing funds to the beneficiary before the dates of our reimbursement. So, do, do also, the nominated bank must forward the document to the issuing bank that it must negotiate because a complying presentation. Okay, that's all for the presentation of, uh, of the documents. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Izzah Adlina Binti Nur Isam and my metric number is 264256. I will continue the presentations with the negotiations of documentary credit. Letter of credit negotiations is defined within uniform customs and practice for documentary credits as the giving of value. In fact, by negotiating exports documents under a letter of credit, Standard Chartered Bank will pay the clients and the exporter with its own money relying on repayment from the issuing bank at a later date. 
letters of credit that are both accessible at sites and useful can be negotiated. Documents under a letter of credit can be negotiated with or without recourse to the customer. If the export's documents comply with the letter of credit provisions and the letter of credit is confirmed by Standard Chartered Bank, then the customers will have no recourse. If, on the other hand, the letter of credit is not verified, then negotiations will take place with recourse to the customer. With recourse in the negotiations of documentary credit means that if the issuing bank refuses to pay or accept documents under the letter of credit, Standard Chartered Bank will have the right to seek reimbursement with interest on the amounts provided to the customer. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is M. Sari Habib Bin Mahani. My name is 26166. So now I will continue to present about the payment and reimbursement in the community credit. There is four types of payment under the community credit, whereas the first one is side payment, second is deferred payment, third acceptance, and the last one is negotiation. Now I'm going to explain about the side payment. Side payment is when an uh, issuing bank is committed to pay immediately at site. Payment is made when the document has been presented and terms and conditions have been uh, complied with the beneficiary. A signed letter of credit is payable to the beneficiary once the required document are presented to the financial institution backing the letter. Side letter of credit give uh, each party involved in the transaction some degree of protection and decrease some of the risk involved with business, especially when it comes to the international dealing. Besides that, if the seller has concern about receiving payment, they must ask for a side letter of credit as a insurance policy where they are generally considered separate from documents such as purchase or sales agreement. Besides that, said letter, side letter of credit must be negotiated by all parties involved and can be used for national and international business. Now, I will continue to present our second payment which is deferred payment. Deferred payment. Okay. If a uh, credit is available with a nominated bank by deferring payment, the nominated bank may honor by incurring a deferred payment undertaking for a complying presentation. By incurring deferred payment undertaking, the nominated uh, bank undertakes to pay the beneficiary and maturity. Uh, the nominated bank may repay its deferred uh, payment undertaking if the beneficiary request. To be reimbursed, the nominated bank must forward the documents to the issuing bank or confirming bank. If the nominated bank is also a confirming bank, a deferred payment undertaking is incurred when a complying presentation is made and the confirming bank must pay at maturity. The next type of payment is acceptance. A certain is required a draft to be drawn either on nominated bank in the beneficiary's country or on issuing bank itself. By accepting a draft, the nominated bank undertakes to pay the beneficiary at maturity. Besides that, the nominated bank uh, has to be careful to examine the presentation to determine that it is complying with the credit as acceptance of a draft represent an unconditional and irrevocable promise by the drawee or acceptor to be. Then, beneficiary can also keep the draft and present it for payment on maturity date, or they also can uh, present it to their bank to request discount. Then, to be reimbursed, the nominated bank must forward the document to the issuing bank and confirming bank. Now I will continue to present about the last type of payment, which is negotiation. Negotiation is when the issuing bank is committed to pay without recourse to drawers or bona fide holders. The issuing bank may nominate that a specific bank or any bank to negotiate it 
their document drawn under their credit. The purchase is by way of the nominated bank advancing fine to the beneficiary before the date that reimbursement is due from the issuing bank. Uh, the purchase may be uh, the nominated bank agreeing to advance funds to the beneficiary or before the date that reimbursement is due. Then, to be reimbursed, the nominated bank must forward the document to the issuing bank or government bank. If the nominated bank is also a confirming bank, it must negotiate without recourse a complying representation. So, now I will pass to the next presenter to present about the other topic. The next, I will present about the assignment of proceeds. Uh, firstly, let's know what is assignment of proceeds. Assignment of proceeds occur or when the beneficiary transfer all or a part of the proceeds uh, from from a letter of credit or documentary credit to the third party beneficiary. Okay, actually there are a few types uh, scenario scenario in this uh, assignment of proceeds where uh, uh, an example of this uh, assignment of proceeds where uh, where uh, the where it can use as the assignment of proceeds can be used to settle the other debt and also to pay the supplier in a business transaction. However, it, it must be approved by the financial institution which uh, has been request and fulfillment of any obligation by the original beneficiary in case for the uh, in case for the to use the assignment of proceeds okay uh, next let's look what is the type of assignment okay for the first one is the assignments um for the first uh, there are two type of assignment which is first is uh, the legal uh, assignment of proceeds uh, secondly is the equitable assignment of proceeds okay for the first one is the legal assignment of the proceeds uh, which is uh, it must be assigned this assignment this legal assignment must be assigned all the interest under the letter of credit or the cumulative credits and were confirmed by the notice of assignment that served on the letter of the credit itself okay for the second one is the equitable assignment <coughs> with the assigning of this assignment with the letter of credit or the documentary credit beneficiary to take legal action against the obligator even though the beneficiary refused to sue the to sue obligator when the uh, letter is default in payments Advantage of assignment of proceeds where for the first one is the original beneficiary can assign all of the documentary credits and also can retain access to any portion of uh, the proceeds that not directed to the third party and also it allow both of the entities or the or both of the party to use the same documentary credit when it's necessary it's mean like I will say in the first one uh, in the first slide uh, in the earlier uh, as I said earlier that uh, can use this assignment of proceeds uh, to another to another trash exchange with uh, to settle another debt or or also can uh, to pay the supplier okay that's all from me thank you okay next uh, for discrepancies Okay, discrepancy is a deviation in complying the document with any of the terms and the conditions of the credit by the beneficiary. If the documents are discrepant, it will definitely create a lot of unnecessary problems. There are nine procedures to prevent discrepancies. For the first one is, at the finalizing of the sales contract, the terms and conditions negotiated and agreed upon should be visible to implement and honor by both parties for the second one is no practical to impose unnecessary or unreasonable term and conditions which are ambiguous unworkable and cannot be honored the third one is instructions of the issuance of the credit must be complete and precise uh, next excessive and unnecessary details should be avoided to prevent confusion and misunderstanding 
In the case of the issuing bank, it should scrutinize the duly completed credit application. The next one is incomplete or unclear instructions should be clarified from the applicant customer before issuing the credit. Okay, for the next one is when advising receives the credit from the issuing bank, it should ensure that incomplete or unclear instructions are properly clarified before advising the beneficiary the full details of the credit. Okay, for the next one is on the part of beneficiary, uh, open the receipt credit. He should peruse uh, the contents and check to ensure the documents required, terms and conditions stipulated are compatible with the contract of sale and comply with all the requirements. For the last one is if any terms and conditions are found to be unworkable, he should contact the applicant buyer immediately to amend the credit accordingly rather than to wait for the last minute to take action. Okay, for the next one is method of resolving discrepancies. Okay, uh, for the first method of uh, resolving uh, discrepancies, first method is the beneficiary corrects or rectifies the documents. In this case, if the discrepancies are minor, the beneficiary may take the documents for correction. For example, uh, additional insurance are required or one copy of invoice short. Okay, uh, so the beneficiary may make a changes but must be ensured that the stipulated documents are subsequently presented to the negotiating bank on or before the expiry date of the credit. For the second method is the negotiating bank contacts the issuing bank for agreement to take up the documents despite the discrepancies which means the negotiating uh, bank will contact the issuing bank for authority to accept the document despite the discrepancies and then the issuing bank will contact the applicant and listing out the discrepancies for authority to accept the documents despite the discrepancies. The third method is the negotiating bank sends the documents to the issuing bank for collection. Okay, the beneficiary should give precise instructions to his bank on the appropriate actions to be taken in the event of refusal of acceptance by the applicant. For the last method is uh, the negotiating bank pays the beneficiary under reserve or against indemnity, which means the bank may agree to pay the beneficiary under reserve that make the documents be dishonored for any reason, or the negotiating bank reserve the right to claim a refund re against the beneficiary together with interest, charges and any loss in foreign exchange. Next, I will present on the issues and fraud in documentary credit. There are many issues related to the documentary credit which it is difficult to obtain technical supports in documentary credit and it is debatable if modest letters of credit are advantageous for machines. Letter of credits are regarded as revocable instruments and this might be due to improper drafting and controlling law as well as provisions added to it. The letter of credit does not cover the following aspects and it does not represent the business reality of today's market. Besides, the agents of letter of credit also may take LCs from customers without fully knowing the cost and risk of their business. Informations as well as the terms and circumstances must be promptly conveyed across all parties participating in the process. It may be difficult to work with a bank to obtain the LCs and untrained document checks because it may cause some problems. Fraud in documentary credit transactions is becoming more and more sophisticated and new fraud schemes are developed constantly. There are two major issues that must be addressed in this regard. For instance, there is no internationally recognized regulatory system for country fraud risk in documentary credit transactions and it is governed by national law. Besides, the researchers also have not adequately investigated the prevention of fraud in letter of credit transactions. The first fraud in documentary credit is the defrauding applicant. The defrauding applicant fraud happens when the buyer requests for credit in favor of the seller on the basis of an underlying international sales contract. The documentary nature of documentary credit might provide an incentive for an unfortunate beneficiary to cheat the application 
by submitting confirming documents to the bank without fulfilling his promise in the underlying sales contract and sending products to the buyer. As this will take time for the ship to cover the distance between the ports of departure and destinations, the applicant buyer will be alert about the fraudulent nature of the documents presented to the bank by the beneficiary long after the credit negotiation have, has complete. Next is defrauding the issuing bank. During the operations of the documentary letter of credit, the beneficiary seller must produce legitimate negotiations documents of title to either the issuing bank in the applicant's country or the confirming, negotiating or advising bank in his own country. An unfortunate applicant can forge original documents of title based on non-negotiable ones received from the seller, present them to the carrier, open the ship's arrival at the port of destinations, and receive a delivery order of releasing the goods while leaving the bank with a liability to make the payment to the beneficiary. The third fraud is defrauding the confirming bank. In the well-known case of Banco Santander SA v. Bayfern Limited, 1999, the beneficiary negotiated the confirming documentations of a delayed payment letter of credit with Banco Santander, which was the confirming bank in the above-mentioned credit. When the credit matured, Banco Santander demanded payment from the originating bank, which was refused owing to the submission of fraudulent documents. The court found in favor of the issuing bank in the matter of Banco Santander SA v. Banco Paribas, ruling that the issuing bank was correct to withhold payment to the consolidating bank. However, in the most recent modifications of the UCP 600, the issuing bank is required to repay the consolidating bank if deferred credits are honored before the maturity. The last one is defrauding the insurance company. Fraudulent parties can sign into sales contract, ships, no products, destroy the vessels on the, on the way to the target port, and then claim damage from an insurance company. It is also possible to sell delivered cargo to a third party and then destroy the ships after redirecting it. After that, they will file a claim with the insurance company for the damage of the goods. I think that's all from our group. Thank you.